If you're recently purchasing car insurance in Michigan, there's eight pieces you really need to focus on. These are the most common mistakes that people buy. Now, our state is one of the more expensive states in the country. Also, our state is one of the most confusing states when it comes to coverage. That's part of the reason we built this channel is to help overcome those objections and help you understand what you're purchasing with your policy. If you are interested in more of that, definitely hit the subscribe and like if you like this video. In the meantime, let's dive into the first reason and the biggest mistake that people do when they're purchasing car insurance in Michigan. The first mistake that I see most people do is they don't buy what's called the mini tort or limited property damage. What that is, is it's probably the least expensive piece on your car insurance policy. When I say least, I'm saying maybe a dollar a month, if that. What that does is that coverage allows you to go after somebody after a claim. So because we're called a no-fault state, I go fix my car, you go fix your car if we have an accident. The fault doesn't make a difference unless the type of coverage you bought. I'll link a video that goes more in depth on that after this, but what that mini tort allows me to do is go back to the other person's insurance if I wasn't at fault and claim to get money reimbursed. So if I had to pay more for towing, if I had to pay a larger deductible, or if I had the standard collision and we had to pay that out of pocket, we can go up to $3,000 reimbursed back to me. For less than a dollar a month, in most cases, it's worth it to keep on your policy. The second piece is picking the right deductible. And I get it, we gotta try to get the price down as much as possible and you have to be able to afford the insurance. With us being one of the more expensive states out there, we have to cut some of the corners somewhere, especially if you can't afford the cost. Well, most people commonly just flat out shoot the $1,000 deductible out right in the beginning. You've gotta ask yourself, can I afford $1,000 if I have a claim? especially if you pick the standard collision. If you can't afford or it's hard to come up with $1,000, it might be worth it and not always that much more expensive to lower the deductible down to 500. Keep in mind, you can go as low as zero, but it's more expensive the lower you go. Personally, I carry 100 on comprehensive and 500 on collision. That way, if someone stole my car or had glass damage, I only pay 100 out of pocket. If I had an actual claim, then I have a $500 deductible that I would have to pay. I pick a little bit different collision, but like I said, we'll link that in the description so you can learn more about that at the end of this. The third common mistake that most people do when purchasing car insurance in Michigan is that you base the cost of the insurance, not the value. And what I mean by that is most of the time someone wrote your policy. And a lot of us are common for the apples to apples quotes. So I'm going to get exactly what I had before. And some companies can't even do that because they offer different coverage levels. The biggest thing you've got to figure out is, is your agent or the agent that created your policy, did they understand your situation and have you had a review on it recently? If you haven't, then you may want to talk to the agent you're speaking with to find out the coverages that you should carry, not so much the coverages that the last agent gave you. I can't tell you how many times I save people money and we double the coverage that they have because giving them the right coverage can actually put you in a different bracket that makes it less expensive. So having an agent that knows what they're doing with that can be a very big benefit. That actually kind of segues into the fourth mistake that most commonly is made is shopping the big box companies. They're great. In some states, they're amazing. But your typical large companies that are exclusive agents where they only sell the one brand, commonly those are more expensive in Michigan. They just don't have a good track record. If you're going to those large box stores that you see on all the commercials, most of the time you're not going to get the best price for the coverage. Going with an independent agent offers a lot more ability to shop multiple companies. So an independent agent is somebody that can shop 10, 12, 15 different companies in one shot. For example, we work with a ton of different companies. I know there's three of them that are always gonna be competitive, but we also wanna make sure that it's a fit for you. Going with the one company that can only give you one price kind of upsets the whole shopping model because you get that price and you're kind of discouraged and they can try to force you into buying it because they know if you shop at that other way, there's likely a chance that you're gonna find a way better deal with a different company. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't wanna put some of the big box companies down. There are a few tiny little zip codes out there that I've seen where they are competitive and that's good. But if you're trying to get the best deal in most cases, going with an independent agent is a fit more often than not. By the way, if you are shopping for car insurance, I'll put a link in the description below. If you want to do a quote with us, you can either do a live quote that will let you get some prices right online, or if you want some help and advice, we'll actually put our link to our form where we can actually go over it with you to make sure it's the right fit. 
I'll put that down if you are interested. Otherwise, the fifth most common issue that I see when people are purchasing car insurance is the bodily injury limits. A lot of people think state minimums are good. It's there for a reason because it is a little bit cheaper. But when we're talking cheaper, we have a couple coverages that make up medical. And the bodily injury is meant to pay out in liability. What that means is if somebody gets hurt and you're liable for it, you carry a certain coverage. So the state minimum for our state is 50000 per person. If you injure someone more than 50000 technically the insurance is still going to kick in because we have our personal injury protection. So in that case, that's part of the reason we're a no-fault state. There's scenarios where people visit our state or people ride in our cars that are from our state where those will kick in and help them, but it's very uncommon. That's one of the reasons our liability isn't that expensive. So going down to the state minimums, in most cases, almost every case, doesn't make sense. There's not a cost to value there that makes it a reason you should go that low. The other piece to that exact same scenario is if you do go lower than that, because the state wants you to have the higher limits, anything that you pick below 250,000 per person, 500,000 per accident, so if there's multiple people, they require that you sign every single renewal that you want to have lower than that. If you forget to sign it, it will let you continue the policy, but it'll default to the higher coverage and you'll notice that the price goes up. Keep that in mind when you're shopping because companies do care what you carried before. Having the higher limits going to a new company actually is a benefit than it is a deterrent. The sixth is probably one of the largest issue that we have is understanding the personal injury protection. So there's a whole video that I made on this, we'll go more in depth than that. But I find that most people don't understand that when you leave the unlimited plan, there's nothing wrong with that. You can choose that. That's the reason they're there is cost-wise, it is cheaper to go lower than that. But once you leave that unlimited plan, you're giving up what's called long-term care. If you get hurt in an accident, yes, the medical, whatever limit you picked is, is covered in the initial incident if it's a covered incident. So if you had a medical claim and you're in the hospital, then they're going to pay for that. But once you get out of that, someone taking care of you, helping you re rehabilitate, getting a wheelchair ramp if you need one, whatever the case is, the quality of life after the fact is what you're giving up. Like I said, we go more into depth on that and I'll link that video in the end of this. The seventh common mistake is choosing the wrong agent. It kind of falls in play with choosing the wrong company. Not necessarily that it's a bad fit in those companies, but the agents, you're going to find that half of us don't know what we're talking about. I have come across so many policies that are missing these tiny little things that could cost a client hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not having the right home insurance, not having the right auto insurance, not having the right coverage in general. So if your agent isn't asking you qualifying questions, what's your situation? Why are you looking? How can I help you? What are your you know income levels? What kind of cars do you have? Like all of the pieces that make that up. I get it, we're really good at finding discounts and we wanna shop that. And yes, we all say we're great at customer service, but it's doing you a disservice if we don't dive in and explain coverages that we think, yeah, this will knock me out of the price range and I might not be competitive, but if I don't explain it to you and give you your options, how can you know that you're with the right agent? More often than not, agents choose the cheap route versus the right route. The eighth mistake that I see most people do is depending on the company that you go with is not doing telematics. Yes, yeah, Mark, I don't want the big brother to track me. And I get it. For those of you that are in that scenario, great. Then just go ahead and watch the next video. But honestly, that's one of the biggest discounts that I get on car insurance. My wife and I saved about 300 and some odd dollars on our policy. I've got a friend that saved almost $600 on her and her daughter's policy. It was amazing. There's a ton of major discounts. Now, when I say it's per company, there are some companies that I don't necessarily recommend that you do the telematics with. It really, it's the ones that track you consistently. To me, that's the big brother world, right? That's where they want to track you everywhere you go. And every year, your policy changes based on that rate. One year, you're going to drive bad and you're going to pay more. And I don't like that. So personally, that's not a fit for me. It's the ones that let you do a 90-day program to where it's 90 days and then done. You can shut it off, delete the app, whatever you want. They get a sample of your driving and they give you the opportunity to drive really good and it's nice. So those scenarios are the ones that I lean towards more than the others. There are a lot of different mistakes that people do make. If you have some that I didn't mention that you think are powerful, leave it in the description below. Otherwise, like I mentioned, if you want to learn more about the types of collision that Michigan offers, that's very powerful to understand. 
And you should be having a discussion with your agent either way around those. Here's the three different levels of collision that you can purchase. If you wanna learn more about the largest issue that we have is understanding the personal injury protection. I've got a brand new video that we made about PIP, the personal injury protection. Go ahead and check one of those out. Otherwise, I'm Mark with Valor Insurance. I'll see you soon.